Okay, this is a presentation on um, troubleshooting installation of AC drives and also some details about motors as well. Um, I don't want to spend too long. The slides are extremely comprehensive. You've got about 40 slides here of information. But just to briefly run through some of the issues that we've got here uh, to consider. Um, obviously, uh, variable speed converters are supplied as standalone units. Um, and they go with the motors, which I'll talk about as well. Um, requirements for safety, obviously very important um, that you set everything up safe. And um, you also have large uh, capacitors on the DC link, so you need to watch out for that as well, discharging those. As the series is interesting, um, you can get um, motors that can operate in a hazardous area, but your converters should not be mounted as this area unless they're specially rated or you've got some guaranteed specification there. And obviously certification should be obtained for the entire variable speed drive system and the motor. Um, obviously uh, squirrel cage motors are extremely reliable and um, they operate under extremely uh, horrendous conditions, wet, dusty, and they keep going forever. You only need to look around you at um, some plants which uh, are shut down, decommissioned, and you find the squirrel cage motors are still beavering away without any problem. On the other hand, the actual converter, the drive, is obviously a lot more sensitive, and you need to protect it. Otherwise, you will have a few problems there. Um, and here's a few typical um, Limits that shouldn't be exceeded, ambient temperature less than 40 degrees, altitude 1,000 meters or below, and relative humidity 95% or below. So obviously, um, if you do have those conditions, you need to uh, take a protective action. And D-rate for high temperatures. Now, I'm not going to um, go into these sort of issues. There's plenty of information here. And the other thing is D-rate for altitude. And the reason is simply because your cooling is less. And there's a few design formulas uh, that are contained here. Obviously, with your power supply cables, make sure that you uh, follow accepted practice IEC standards or the IEEE standards. And make sure, and this is the good old chestnut, that earthing, make sure that you follow the earthing requirements. Um, so I'll just run through there. Power supply cables, make sure that you're adequate for the current rating. And obviously, bear in mind that you have a lot of harmonics in your uh, variable speed drive set. And you may have issues with um, electromagnetic interference. Um, it's probably less of an issue than it was 10, 15 years ago, but it's something you need to bear in mind because of the non sinusoidal uh, voltage that's produced. Um, and control cables, obviously, uh, need to have a magnetic shield as well. Um, something which a lot of the uh, installation guys prefer to avoid because it costs extra money, but separate cable ladders or ducts. Unless uh, you're in uh, using fiber optic cable, when obviously you can get optical isolation, which means that you've got um, optical isolation and you haven't got any problems with the EMI EMC. Start stop of drives. Um, obviously the first method that we recommend here is why to start stop with the converter control system. Um, a few other com comments here. The contactor um, gives you a comparison between different things here. I'm looking more at troubleshooting, so let's so move on. Um, I really want to look at the commissioning and the installation issues, which is near the end of this. Mounting in metal enclosures, um, what we're talking about there is just watch out for airflow and cooling and keep your cooling efficiency as high as possible. Don't worry about this. There's a formula there showing you what to do. Um, natural ventilation, um, but you may need to have forced ventilation if natural ventilation is not going to be adequate. Uh, important thing here is the forced ventilation um, cooling airflow can be assisted by a fan at the top or the bottom of the cubicle. Quite important that. Um, 
Let's go on. Alternative mounting, I'm not going to worry about. It's worth reading about recessed mounting, alternative mounting. But what I would like to look at is the issues of the uh, PLC control wiring. There's a diagram here showing you the different uh, ways of wiring your variable speed drive. This approach has probably been replaced to a large extent by the good old um, serial communications wiring. Probably in most cases, uh, you've got your variable speed drive connected through the variable speed drive to the PLC, and you'll be using protocols such as Modbus, uh, DeviceNet, or indeed Profibus um, is another favorite. Um, rather than RS-232 or 485 on its own. Pre-commissioning, there's just a few topics here I just want to talk about. Pre-commissioning is obviously ensure that everything's installed correctly and you've got the correct settings for the application and there's a few functional tests to make sure it all works. So here's a list of sort of typical checks. Power and motor cables are correct. Uh, everything's worked uh, appropriately. No faults in the cable prior to energization. Use the mega correctly. Um, control cables correctly installed and shields earthed at one end only. Don't earth your control cable shields at both ends, otherwise you've got a earth loop forming, as those of you that are experts would remember. And obviously your cooling fan is operating correctly and actually hasn't dropped out. During the commissioning, um, look at energization, disconnect the motor cable, so you don't have a motor suddenly starting up. Check, turn on the power, check all the basic electrical parameters, measure the voltages, DC bus voltage, uh, check that the microprocessor has done, uh, has gone through its check sequence, doesn't come up with a nice little message saying over voltage, which I had because of a uh, incorrectly set up power um, a capacitor bank. Uh, confirm the cooling fan is running, yeah, correct direction is also another good check, and record all your settings in a commission test report, date it, and put your name on so everyone knows. Basic settings are obviously uh, base voltage, base frequency, motor details. Uh, and there's another list here of other parameters which you can have. There's a slew of parameters that you can actually think. And one very important thing when you're checking, don't over flux the motor. That is cause for major pain. So typical things here, you'd be selecting on maximum speed, uh, minimum speed, if necessary, uh, motor current, current limit, acceleration time, deceleration time, braking method, and starting torque boost. Okay, so that gives you a quick summary of all the issues uh, with troubleshooting, installing, commissioning your uh, motor, and uh, particularly your um, drive system. And that is all from me, Steve Mackay at uh, IDC Technologies or Engineering Institute of Technology. Thank you very much for tuning in and listening to this.